Good evening and welcome to A Course in Miracles, text chapter 16, The Forgiveness of Illusions. We continue where we left off last night, 16.6, The Bridge to the Real World. And this is one of the most revealing chapters of what one can expect, what one seemingly separate body mind can expect when we release the idea of separation and what is actually going on with us when we do. And so as we start, we again give gratitude and, and recognition right here in the now, the eternal now of the presence of the Christ mind, our holiest self brought about by the transformation, transfiguration, and transcendence of one aspect of ourself that appeared on this earth as a body mind 2000 years ago as the man we all know as Jesus Christ, who came through at a high level of awakened awareness and then transcended the ego body mind and became the awakened part of the dreamer's mind the awakened part of the son of God's dreaming mind infused fully with God's essence, his holiest spirit, which is the memory of God in our essential self, the self, which is the essence shared with God. And so Jesus united with the Christ mind, demonstrating the physical representation of God on earth in a full non-dualistic way, because the minute he released the body, he dissolved it into thin air, and we call that ascension. He returned in full awareness of himself to that which is our source, God, and merged with the essence of God, and therefore gave light, gave memory, gave awareness to the dreaming mind, so that every fractured part of the dreaming mind either in formless thought, spirit world, first part of the dream, or thought in projected into form, human being, body mind, the ability to remember itself as that which is the extension of the eternal love of God. And so the memory is within us. The words we read on this page which Christ represented himself as Jesus to Helen Schuchman, came through, the memory of God came through and presented itself as a symbol that we could relate to until we realized symbols are but truth twice removed and would bring us to the full realization of the I am as the essential nature of all of us. And so that we would dissolve the identification, the identity with physical space-time matter and return as the essence back to the essence, which is the essence of God, the very essence of what we are. And there's a transition that happens when we awaken to the self. What is enlightenment? Enlightenment or awakening or atonement, the same, the same experience, and that's a concession, the same knowing. Um, is simply the recognition of our true essential self, the essence of what we are, the self, the soul, the spirit, which is the extension of God's self, soul, spirit. And um, while we inhabit the temporal body mind, because the script is written, and the only choice we do have is, and it's the only choice we have, the script is written. What's going to happen is going to happen. You either resist it and think you can make alternative plans, which is simply the delaying of what is meant to be, or you can let go, let God, and allow the flow to come and align yourself with your highest mind, Christ's mind, in which means you see the world in a new way. You see heaven where those earthly hell once used to be, and you experience yourself as the extension of heaven where once upon a time you experienced yourself not only as separate, but a suffering. And when you realize the essence of you 
is perfect and always healed. And you bring attention to that and only that, vigilance to that. The world of suffering dissolves because you become present in the eternal here now. And when you're present in the eternal here now, there's no story. And the minute there's no story, there's a, a non-attachment, a detachment from that which appeared as a body-mind. And the healing spontaneously takes place in a holy instant. The bridge to the real world. The, the search for special relationship. Ouch. Is the sign. <laughs> Ouch. That you equate yourself with the ego, not with God. Why? Because a special, the need for a relationship to be loved and to love someone comes from the belief that you're lonely, alone. And therefore, you do not realize that you are the extension of God and will never feel alone because you're one with your brothers as the kingdom of God. And so the fact that you believe you can be alone, isolated in, in space and time, stuck in your physical body matter, space-time matter, where you've split the eternal now into past, present, future, means that you've, you don't identify with God. You identify with body, mind, ego. For the special relationship has value only to the ego. Ouch. Ouch. To the ego. Unless a relationship has special value, in other words, you can gain something from it, of value to you, of what you believe will value, make you feel more valued. It has no meaning. For it perceives all love as special. And so I will only love that which makes me feel special because love has to be. Yet this cannot be natural. For it is, unli it is unlikely the relationship of God and his son, you. And all relationships are unlike this one, must be unnatural. Remember this. Cannot be unnatural. Cannot be natural. This cannot be natural. For it is unlike the relationship of God and his son, which is completely natural. And all relationships, unlike this one, must be unnatural. Because the Father and His Son are one. For God created love as He would have it be, eternal, unconditional, and gave it as it is, eternally and unconditionally, which means He's still giving it. If it's eternal, it's forever now. Love has no meaning except as its creator defined it by His will. And love is God's will. Love has no meaning other than what God gave it, gave it to. And what is God's, in our interpretation of God's meaning behind love? The unconditional acceptance of the extension of the love of God eternally. Extension of purity, innocence, and unconditional acceptance. The extension of joy and peace. The permanence of joy and peace. The safety of joy and peace. It is impossible to define it otherwise and understand it. Love is freedom. To look for it by placing yourself in bondage and what binds you, the body, is to separate yourself from it. You've been bound by time, space, and matter. For the love of God, no longer for the love of God. So he's like saying, for the love of God exclamation mark no longer seek for union in separation you can't find it in body mind nor for freedom in bondage you can't find freedom in a body okay. trust me i've tried i bought a harley and rode for thousands of miles still wasn't free i still had to pay for petrol <laughs> still had to eat food as you release release yourself from the idea of bondage release your brothers from the idea of sin fear and guilt which you bind them to you by apportioning guilt to them and blaming them for your suffering. Because they're not. Nothing has ever happened to you other than by your hand. Not a single person has bumped into you in your street unless you planned it and scripted it for a reason so that you could see it another way. And every opportunity of meeting and, and encountering another 
is an opportunity to see the cry for love from you or from them and the offering of love from you or from them. And to read into the lesson and realize everything is given me for my highest purpose so that I may realize what I am and not believe I am a body. It really takes us straight to that lesson. I'm not a body. I am free for I'm still as God created me. I am that I am. So as you release, so you will be released. And that's the same thing. Release and forgiveness is the same thing. Forget this not, or love will be unable to find you and comfort you because love is your only comforter. What is love? God is love. Love is God. God is your comforter. It's the only way you feel comfortable and eternally free and joyous. You'll feel that release of all of this tension of the essence of your spirit, which is eternally extending, bound by this limitation, this idea of a limitation of a body-mind. And when you realize that it's no longer bound by, a limit, by this limitation of a body-mind, you'll feel that extension of yourself pour into all of it, which means loving your creations by showing up as love. And so those that call for love will find you so that you can show them another way to see themselves. And remember, you're only healing the mind. And you don't try and attempt to heal the body. You don't work on the body. You simply heal the idea, the mind, the thoughts dissolve, and the body responds. And you know how the esoteric spiritual world has gone about it. They've gone about hands-on healing, trying to fix the body. And what happens? They just damage themselves and hurt themselves later on. You heal the mind that believes it's separated, alone, lonely, and bound by suffering, fear, guilt, which is always bound by story, past. And you're never upset over the reasons you think you are. So you bump into someone in the street and you fall down and you incensed. Why? Because your previous relationship, your parents may have been abusive, your father threw you on the ground, or your husband was abusive and threw you on the ground, or your wife was abusive and she Akidoed you into the ground because she was a ninja, you know, and so now you're incensed by someone who immediately reminds you of the previous abuse, and you bring that entire story into now, and it goes into your physicality, and you may not even feel it at first. It becomes the cancer in the future, the illusionary future, because you've got all of that pent up hate, and you don't want to say anything. You want to be the bigger person, but you keep it inside, and then it just bubbles up and becomes illness, which is why. In this world of body, mind, space, time, matter, the most divine, um, inspired, given, and this sounds so harsh, but it is, um, lesson is the lesson of cancer because there is no cure and never will be a cure for cancer. Why? Because cancer is created by negative attack thoughts that attack the representation of body, mind that we think we are. So it's our, our hate our fear, our pain, our suffering, attacking ourselves. So the minute the, the cellular memory goes into fear, pain, guilt, it then turns on itself in the cellular level, um, cancer, which is just an attack form on the physical appearance realm. Attack thoughts attacking ourselves, just like our thoughts attack us in our awareness, our mind. There is a way in which the Holy Spirit asks your help. If you would have it, if you would have his help, so there's always a glad exchange. The holy instant is the most helpful aid in protecting you from the attraction of guilt, the real lure in special relationships. Okay, so now, Lou, what do you mean the holy instant? So what is this holy instant? Okay, so let's say someone says something abusive, ugly, derogatory, racist, sexist, whatever. Stop. Take a moment. Take a moment. Like a sportsman, take a knee. Stop for a second. Be still. To whom does this thought appear? It, the answer is to me. Step deeper. To whom does this thought appear? To the identity. But I'm not this identity. And so now I take my entire vigilant attention 
vigilance and I just go still. Now, between now and when I say now again, I want you to go completely silent and let no thought enter your mind. And you place your full attention on the silence. Now. Now, okay, come back. Between the two nows, there was nothing, no thought. That no thought, if you were to abide in there for a long period of time and not let any thought intrude, that nothingness is the very essence of yourself. That without thought is the essence of your spirit. Your spirit, you've just met your spirit. You've met your soul. You've met yourself. You've met the same self, which is the same essence as God. To abide in God, the closest experience we have while we're in body-mind awareness is exactly what you've just experienced between that now, now where time stood completely still. There was no intrusion of thought. If you go back to that moment, it was blissful. That is the only purpose of meditation, to find that space. Now, that space of nothingness is when I say, place all your attention on God. That is it. Don't objectify God. There's no image. Objectifying God takes you away from because it, it just adds another thought. The be still and know I am is the now. Now, that is the I am. There's no language needed to be spoken. You can, before you go into now, now, so Holy Spirit, enter into my mind. Memory of God, enter into my space now. I am that I am. I invite God's memory into my awareness. Holy Spirit, Show me another way to see this. And you go silent between now and you hold that now as long as possible. If a thought pops in, you say, you don't say anything. It just, you don't fight it. You just don't pay attention. Thoughts come, you go back into the silence and you keep practicing this until you can spend eternity there. Because when you finally release this body mind and you have no more attachment to this world, that is the experience you will experience as yourself in oneness with the Christ mind, in oneness with God, the eternal, blissful, silent self, ever extending. And of course, that is while we embody mind. Once we go beyond the bridge, well, I can't explain it. No one can because no one physically alive has ever been there, except we are there in truth, but our memory cannot go back. Not yet. You do not recognize that this is its real appeal. For the ego has taught you that freedom lies in it. And so attraction of guilt is the attraction of noise. And it's always lured in a special relationship where you're made to feel special by someone else and you're going to make someone else feel special. And there's an exchange there. There's a transaction. You don't realize the transaction is its real appeal. Yet the closer you look at the special relationship, the more apparent it becomes that it must foster guilt and therefore must imprison. So seek not for a special love relationship partner. If you're meant to be given one, you will be given one. If there is someone for you that is going to walk you home, then let it be. But don't start vision boarding and making manifest a man or a woman or whatever. Because you're just going to create another obstacle to peace. Don't go looking. You don't have to go swipe left, swipe right, get yourself onto a dating site. Go hang out outside bars or whatever it is that people do. I have no idea. Don't care. Don't want to. Happy. And when the right person 
at your level of conscious awareness, polarized in physicality, but consciously in the same level, you will meet in the most amazing way. If you're meant to have a holy companion, stop looking. The special relationship is totally meaningless without a body. Because if you're not a body, who do you want to connect with? What do you want to, what would you do if you had no body? What would you do if you were no body? Who would you be if you were a nobody? What would you be if you had no body? What would you still want to keep, own, possess, aspire to if you had no physical body? What would you still do in this world if you could change and transform anything without a body? Would you still be searching for joy? Would you still be getting rid of suffering? Remember, there's no brain, so there's no memory anymore. If you were not a body, there's no story if you were not a body. There's no pent up pain at a cellular level if you were no body. There's no history if you are a nobody. If you value it, you must also value the body. And what you value, you will keep. And then for you keep what's attached to that body, which means is all your ideas of past sin, fear, guilt. The special relationship is a device for limiting yourself to a body and for limiting your perception of others to their body. And yet the great rays, the Holy Spirit, the love and light of God, the essence of God itself, God is light, ever extend great rays would establish the total lack of value of the special relationship if they were seen. Why? Because if you're an extension of the great rays and everyone that you thought was a body is the same extension of the exact same great rays, where do you start? Where do they end? Where does God start and God ends? And where do you start and you end? If it's all one extension of oneness forever, what's the difference between you and anyone else when there is only one eternally extending source energy forever extending as that which is love, joy, peace? Because the total extension of joy and peace becomes love in itself. For seeing them, if you were able to see them, the body would simply disappear because its value would be lost and you'd be seeing it in light. God is the light with which you see. And as you extend that, where is the body if it's just pure light? And where is any other body if it's just pure light? And so your whole investment in seeing it would be withdrawn for it. And yet you are a spirit. You are free because you are still as God created you. And therefore, God is light. You are light. So where is a body when you remember yourself as the extension of God, as a son of God? You see the world you value, and you value. You may not like it, but you value. For as long as you hang on to one little piece of this world, you value it. Because if you value one piece of it, you value all of it, because all of it has the same illusionary DNA. No matter what it appears like, it's all illusionary DNA. It's all an hallucination. On this side of the bridge, this dream world, physicality, you see the world of separate bodies seeking to join each other in separate unions and to become one by losing. So two people want to join, become one. And what do they do? They lose themselves in the whole relationship. I give you, you give me, you change for me, I change for you. And we're just constantly sacrificing because we don't come into relationship to serve the divine. We come into relationship to see what we can get out. And very often we come into relationship because we're just simply horny and turned on and no cooking clue what's going on, but there's this desire. And desire is simply the recognition of our unwounded self. So if you are completely healed and someone comes into your space, they won't be attracted to you because you heal. They'll only be attracted to you if you are mirroring their wounds. So attraction is the mirroring of wounds. So, so two people come together, and so the wounds can be revealed. Once you are completely cleaned of wounds, 
once you're completely separated from the idea of wounds, you've released wound and you are the self, the eternal light and love of God. People won't hook into you if they've got wounds. And the only time you'll ever move into holy companionship is if you get an exact mirror, an unwounded mirror. Any other time you go into, even if you think it's a holy companionship, two wounded mirrors coming to each other. Once that relationship is dedicated to God, the relationship becomes a way of releasing and bringing to the surface the wounded mirrors so that you can release them through forgiveness. But all relationships are there to show you the wounds. And only once the wounds are done can you truly walk each other home without any attachment. It's the, I love you, but I don't need you. And that could be such a painful experience to an ego that needs to be needed. And so it has to come at a certain level of conscious awakened awareness. When two individuals seek to become one, they are trying to decrease their magnitude because they are an extension of the one great ray. And so you're now decreasing it into now the two want to become one. It's the Jerry Maguire, you complete me. Fairy tale. Each would deny his power for the separate union excludes the universe not realizing the universe is what they are. Far more is left outside than would be taken in for God is left without and nothing is actually taken in because they think they're separate, separated from everyone else. They're trying to become union, two and be join and become one. Isn't that the Christian church vows? Two join and become one. And if one such union were made in perfect faith, the universe would enter into it. Why? Because the universe is in the mind of that which joined. Yet the special relationship the ego seeks does not include even one whole individual. Because how much does anyone truly know you? And because we keep secrets in the mind, or we think secrets are in the mind, we keep thoughts separate, we keep ourselves separate, we keep our fantasy separate. We love someone else, we're still fantasizing about other people. And so we don't really want to let people into our mind. So we never truly completely surrender. The ego wants but a part of him or her and sees only this part and nothing else. And that's why we say people have changed because they present themselves with their masks in terms of trying to appease you as you try to appease them. As soon as the, set, the relationship settles, the dust settles, the, the romantic dust settles. The two pop up and, oh, you're not what I married and you're not what I married or you're not what I got with and you've changed and you're longer the same. And the beginning of love-hate starts. Across the bridge to the Christ mind, in other words, the bridge to the Christ mind, the mind, the mind of Christ that remembers the essence of itself as the shared essence of God. Across the bridge, it is so different. For a time, the body is still seen. This is the new world. This is the transition from ego body mind to right mind, to Christ mind. It's still seen, but not exclusively as it is seen in this world of body mind illusion. The little spark that holds the great rays, little spark, the physical body mind that holds the great rays, the Christ mind, the essence of God's loving spirit, which is the sonship within it is also visible. And this, this little spark cannot be limited so long to littleness. Can you imagine lighting a candle and bringing it before the sun? Would you even notice it? Once you have crossed this bridge in awareness, the value of the body is so diminished in your sight that you will see no need at all to magnify, be special, have attention. For you will realize that the only value, sorry, for you will... For you will realize that the only value the body has is to enable you to bring your brothers to the bridge with you. So the body becomes a vessel for the teacher for God. You become an instrument for the voice of God and to be released together. So as you release, so are you released. You become a walking, talking Christ on this earth, just like Jesus did before. You become a a signpost, a symbol for a way to be. And there's no special in it, in it. And you'll notice that those that do that, 
They don't draw attention to themselves. They have no need to market themselves. They don't want to be called guru or whatever. They don't need to be called master or master teacher or something special. They are simply themselves. And they show up and they offer them of themselves completely. And yes, some of them teach full time and, and, they, and people give them charity and, and people help them and take care of them. And that's fine. But what you'll notice is these teachers don't charge. I don't care what you say. They don't charge because they know they full, their full faith is in God. And they know they're taken care of. And that's okay. There's a time. There'll come a time where you'll recognize it completely. And in the meantime, if you want to make a career out of sharing the Course of Miracles, by all means do. But there'll come a time where you will realize you're just sharing what everybody already knows and they've just forgotten. And there's no need to charge for it. And that's okay if you do. Jesus forgives you. But Lou, you said there's no Jesus. The bridge itself is nothing more than a transition in the perspective of reality. Let's read that again because it's so important. The bridge in itself, let's not go make it physical now. Let's not go mystify the bridge. Is nothing more than a tr transition in the perspective of reality. But Lou, you just said the bridge is Christ's mind. Yes, I did. The Christ mind itself is nothing more than a transition in the perspective of reality. Because once you trans, once you be transported across the bridge, the Christ mind, the awakened dreamer's mind, what happens to it? It returns to the great rays and joins with the great rays. And now there's just great rays. There's no father, there's no son, there's no Holy Spirit. It's just the eternal extension of love. There's no universe, there's no planet, there's no bodies, there's no duality. Where the father starts and the son ends, makes there's no separation. And the father's essence is holy. The father is spirit, the father is mind. And what is, what is the extension of the father? What is the extension of the mind? Holy spirit, eternally extending in the eternal now, forever now, as the essence of peace, love, joy. On this side, dreaming mind world, everything you see is grossly distorted and completely out of perspective. Now, many people like to say, it's just an illusion. Yeah, but have you thought of illusionists? When they create an illusion, there's still matter. There's still a sleight of hand. There's still something going on. So when you look upon the illusion, it's not that it doesn't exist. Oh, the universe most definitely exists. It's just not what you think it is. What seems to be the sun and the planet and solar systems and nebula and the world and mountains and trees and bodies and animals is just light vibrating in a way that you can perceive it as the story you want it to be in order to hold yourself in bondage to a body and therefore feel separate. If you were to see the whole universe correctly as the Christ mind sees it, all you would see is the great rays eternally shining. No mountains, no trees, no people, no animals, no earth, no sun, no moon, no Jupiter, no Mars, no solar system, no nebula, no universe. Pure light, ever extended. Pure light condensed in your limitations of your filters of sin, fear, guilt, appear as the world, bodies, animals, trees, blah, 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 blah. What, what is? Little and insignificant is magnified. It's just idea. And what is strong and powerful, cut down to littleness in our mind, can never be destroyed. In the transition, there is a period of confusion. And it feels hurtful. And so many people give up now. Because it's hurt and the pain feels so intense. I thought the reason I came to this course, Lou, was so that I could get rid of the pain. And now I'm just straight back into it. Yeah, absolutely. And intensely so. And that fire is about to burn out, but you need to understand what the pain is. You need to understand the pain is attached to memory, storytelling. And it's manifesting in the here now, in the body, in the presence, in the arm, in the leg, in the head, in the wherever. But when we bring it into the light of awareness and we be still and know I am, I'm not a body, I'm free. Where's the pain? It's attached to memory. When you let go and there's no thought, where's the memory? If there's no thought, there's no memory. 
and what do you abide as? The essence, spirit, the self, the Holy Son of God himself in the stillness of the I am. And what happens in the I am, the essence of God's Holy Spirit flowing through you? Healing. And so there is a transition. There is a period in which the sense of actual dis, dis, disorientation may occur. It's proper disorientation. It's proper intensity. But fear it not, for it means only that you have been willing to let go your hold on the distorted frame body of reference memory that seems to hold your world together. So well done to you that has the courage to bring it into awareness because I don't really want to go there. Come on, Lou, I don't really want to go there. Do I really have to? I don't want to think about it. It's, it's going to be too painful to think about it. It's going to be too painful to bring it into the presence. I'm suffering, but it's too painful. You're already suffering. It doesn't get any worse. Bring it into awareness. Let's get rid of it. Let's heal it. Let's bring awareness in. That's all. We're not healing. There's no magic hands-on Reiki projection, energy staff, crystals, ayahuasca, mushrooms, whatever, medicine. Bring it into the awareness. Look at it. Focus on God. Silence. This is the frame of reference it's built around, this special relationship. Without this illusion, there could be no meaning you would seek here. You wouldn't want this place anymore. There's nothing here for you that remotely comes close with peace to the love, to the joy, which is your eternal immortality, your eternal, your immortal reality in God. Fear not that you will be abruptly lifted up and hurled into reality. This isn't that Christian stuff that you see where people are just floaty, floaty with their bodies up into the heaven. The rapture has happened. <laughs> Who the fuck came up with that shit? <laughs> oh, God, what were they smoking? What kind of biblical mushroom did they ingest or inhale or snort? I mean, like those pictures where people are just floating in the heaven. It's like, ah! You know, it's like an alien invasion. You can float it up. Where are you going to go with this little tiny body speck of dust? Look how small the, the planet is in this entire universe. What are you going to do with the body? This is bizarre. It's bizarre. The rapture. And they made so many movies. Uh, it's just bizarre. Throw that nonsense away. You just awaken to self. This body will gently put, be put down. And there will be a transition, and please take note. Please take note. Future generations, thousands of years to go of little human beings running around this planet. Eventually, there'll come a time where the, they'll just not be able to breed. And after a couple of generations, there'll just be nobody left in this world and feather silence. The whole thing will just dissolve. Time is kind. And if you use it on behalf of reality, remembrance, it will keep gentle pace with you in your transitions. So don't worry. You don't have to get rid of your lover and your wonderful lovemaking sessions when you hold hands and hands and walk into the sunset, sunset singing Kumbaya and staring into each other's eyes and, and, and worshiping Jesus. You know, you, you can keep your fancy car and your fancy house and your fancy children and your fancy career and, and your fancy charities and make yourself feel good. Slowly, 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 ever so slightly. Unless you're suffering, in which case, that's the gift. Because if you're suffering and it's boo, boo and pain everywhere, and, oh, suffer, mommy's a bitch and daddy's an arsehole and husband's an ass and daughters are this and sons are that, and the world's shit, mm, and the world is heavy, heavy, heavy. Hey, you've just been blessed. Why? Because you're going to get to that point where it's like, fuck you, God, I've had enough. There must be a better way. And he says, is it? God always says, is it? The South African thing. God le learned to speak Afrikaans. So he says, is it? Carry on. So angry. And then you burn that anger. <sighs> surrender. I just surrender. I give up. Ah, okay. You're out of the way now. Here's my life. 
Wow. Is that it? Yep, that's it. But don't I have to um chicky boom sit under the Bodhi tree, pray through my third eye, exhale through my Uranus, and then transcend through the heart space and then breathe through this and hands on healing and walk on water and turn Jack Daniels into whiskey, wine into water. And you know, why and people come and I'm don't eat because I've transcended through the energy kundalini. And then I ayahuasca, and then I'm like so shuwao. And then I get a donkey and I come into town and there's palms all over the place. And don't I have to? It's like, dude, where did you hear that shit? Because God says dude all the time. Like, is it a dude? You know. Well, that's how I hear. Yeah. It's just like, dude, chill. The more you're ready, the more you let go, the more you're ready, the more you let go. And the reason you're suffering is because you fought so hard to be someone and you went so far off your path because you made manifest the law of attraction. You listened to the void and Abraham came through. Abraham, first in the dictionary apparently, came through and taught you how to manifest and you manifested and it drove you fucking insane. And that's why you suffer because you wanted to be special. And the more special you thought you were because you're an empath and you're spiritual, more you suffer. And when you let all of that nonsense go and you give it all to me, to the light of awareness, to the great rays to shine right through them, and you just chill, take a pull and chill, take a Holy Spirit pull and chill, be still and know I am, release it, give it to me, give it to the Christ mind. Remember Jesus, remember yourself, the true self, capital S, remember the Christ within you, take Christ, put him in your heart. And yes, if it's at first, and you want to see him as the physical being, Jesus, bring Jesus into your heart. But realize that Jesus is now Christ, which is awakened mind, the joyful eternal extension of that which is. Bring that into your awareness. Invite Holy Spirit in, the memory of God eternally within you now. You know, invite it in. Be still, no thoughts. Don't imagine, don't make manifest. Just be, be as you are. Still, be still and know that I am God. And then you let go. And you let go. And you're still happy and you still, you still enjoy ice cream and you still enjoy walks on the beach, but it's no longer about walking on the beach to be happy. It's no longer eating ice cream to be happy. It's because you're happy that you walk. It's because you're happy that you enjoy ice cream and share it with others. It's because you know yourself as the happiness as the extension of God, now the world changes because you no longer want to acquire anything in order to feel loved. You're no longer calling for love. Love calls you and you've answered, and now you share the love you are. The urgency is only in dislodging your mind from its fixed position here. This will not leave you homeless and without a frame of reference. You're not going to be out on the streets going kumbaya on the street corner of the Bible. There's none of that. God's not going to do that to you. You're his child. He wants you to be happy. He'll provide for you. But trust him so that he'll provide for you in ways that you can't even imagine. The period of disorientation. The period. How many years, Lou? How many days? How many months? As long as you're unwilling. That's as long as it is. Which precedes the actual transition is far shorter than the time it took to fix your mind so firmly on illusions and the universe. And so, depending on who you talk to, 13 point something to 3,000 regressions, 16.4 billion years old, it's taken you 16.4 billion years to get here now. It's only going to take you roughly 6 billion years to get back. I lied. Take you a holy instant. <laughs> Don't panic. It's not going to take another 6,427 sacred lifetimes. No. You're awakened here now because there is no time. Don't worry about how many, how long to go. The minute you go into how long to go, you've gone straight back into space time and you're trying to figure out awakening, atonement. Don't go worried about how. Be here now. And when you're here now in total silence, there's no time. It's already happened here now. Remember always, nothing real can be threatened. Delay will hurt you now more than before. Oh, shit. Maybe I shouldn't have done this course. 
delay will hurt you now more than before only because you realize it is delay. So don't, don't delay now. Let go. That escape from pain is really possible. And you've already experienced it. You're already experiencing the releasing. Find hope and comfort rather than despair in that. You could not, you could not long find even the illusion of love in any special relationship here, because love is unconditional and shared with all equally. For you are no longer wholly insane, and you would soon recognize the guilt of self-betrayal for what it is, because dreaming of illusions is self-betrayal, and guilt comes from self-betrayal. And yet you've taken that self out and projected onto all others, and you realize it was always only me, and I'm now so grateful for all the shitty stuff that happened in my life. Because if it wasn't for that shitty stuff and getting angry and blaming others and feeling so horrible and suffering and suffering and woe is me that I would go look for another way, eventually get angry and eventually burn up the anger and eventually surrender and say, show me another way. And here I am. Not me, the I am. Nothing you seek to strengthen in the special special relationship, special love relationship is really part of you. Nothing, nothing physical, nothing permanent. And you cannot keep part of the thought system that taught you it was real and understand the thought, capital T, that knows what you are, the Christ mind that knows what you are, the Christ mind one with God's Holy Spirit that knows what you are, the Christ mind one with God's Holy Spirit and one with God knows what you are. Not a body-mind, but the extension of the essence, which is the love of God. You have allowed the thought of your reality to enter your mind. The memory has come back. And because you invited it, God's Holy Spirit, symbolically, the memory of God in you, because you're inviting that which is already in you, it will abide with you. So center, be still, and abide in God. Be still and know I am is abiding. Your love for it will not allow you to betray yourself. And you could not enter into a relationship where it could not go with you. And so holy companionships are completely open to sharing and serving the love they are. So two people come together purely to serve the love of God with everyone equally. For you would not want to be apart from it. Be glad you have escaped the mockery of salvation the ego offered you. And do not look back with longing on the travesty it made of your relationships, where it was always about gain and give and transact and hate and love and conditions and fears and guilt. Now, no one needs suffer, for you have come far too far, you have come too far to heal to the illusion of the beauty and holiness of guilt because there's no beauty in physicality and there's no hill holiness and guilt. Only the holy insane could look on death and suffering, sickness and despair and see it thus. What guilt has wrought is ugly, fearful and dangerous. This world is just there. See no illusions of truth and beauty there. And you be thankful that it is a place where truth and beauty wait for you because you recognize it's always being you. Go on to meet them gladly, your holy companions in this world, your, the brotherhood of the Christ, and learn how much it waits, awaits you for the simple willingness. That's it. That's the, that's the superpower. That's the trick. That's the formula. Simple willingness to give up nothing because it is nothing. Just to be as you are and to be still and know I am. The new perspective you will gain from crossing over will be the understanding of where heaven is in your mind and your heart. And heart and mind is the same thing as you abide in God, as the Christ in you remembers the Father and remembers you, and the sonship collapses as one son and returns to that which is the eternal love, joy, and peace of God. From this side, it seems to be outside across the bridge somewhere out there, somewhere in space-time. 
And yet, as you cross to join with it within your heart, it will join with you and become one with you, for you are that which is the love of God. And you will think in glad astonishment, just for a tiny second, you'll still think that for that all that, that for all this you gave up nothing. The glad exchange, the joy of heaven, your temple, the essence of what you are, you are God's heaven. You are that in which God abides. Where does God abide in heaven, which has no limit, and therefore is limitless, is increased with every light that returns to take its rightful place within it. So as every one of this body-mind projection awakens and returns and joins with the Christ, Christ mind, every one of us that joins the Christ mind becomes, takes up more and more and more of the dreaming mind. So the brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until there's no more shadows left. It's the analogy I've given you once before. You imagine a football stadium filled with thousands of people, but it's in pitch darkness. And there's millions of you. And you're aware of there's people around you. You've got some in your hand. And all that happens is someone leans across and you go. And then you notice there's someone next to you with a lighter too. And you lean across and you give some light and you give some light. And before you know it, the light just spreads until the entire football stadium is just filled with light. And now you realize, oh, look, it's got a dome roof with the Michelangelo picture, and there's God. Symbolically, the light has come, my dear friends, when Christ Jesus awoke 2,000 years ago and became the light of the dream. One spark it took, and it was just in time, but not in eternity, a matter of time. Wait no longer for love, for the love of God and you. Love of God is you. And may the holy instant, the silence, be still and know I am, speed you on your way. And so holy instant is something that happens to you. It's something you choose to do. And then you'll realize it never was a choice. It just was given you because it's a decision to be happy. And once the decision to be happy and to remember God as the happiness you are is made, that becomes a holy instant. It's not all of a sudden a fairy flies past and goes zap, shazam, and now you wake. It's your decision for God. It's your vigilance for God first. And the thought appears. To whom does a thought appear? Vigilance. Straight. Silence. Gratitude. Lift. Try it. On your way, as surely as it will surely do, if you but let it come to you. Don't go searching. Don't go make manifest. I've already seen an advert. Make How to make manifest your enlightenment. Here's a spiritual term that you find in South Africa. May liebe folk baralis. Seriously, what next? Make manifest your enlightenment. Man. It's got the word man. If it's got make man, it's a good cock put. Stop. Okay. At the center of all cock is man. Please don't go there. The Holy Spirit asks, doesn't say the manly Holy Spirit, just says the Holy Spirit, probably very feminine energy, asks only this little help of you. Here it is. Let's highlight a different color, Holy Spirit's request. Whenever your thoughts wander to a special relationship, which still attracts you, Enter with him into a holy instant. Holy instant. Lou's taught you now. Be still, know I am. To whom does this fantasy appear? Angelina and Jolie, or is it Brad Pitt? Don't put them in the same room. They're going to fight with each other. Okay, so just who's your fantasy? Be still. To whom does this fantasy appear? Be still. Empty the mind. Empty, empty, empty. Be still and know I am. Invite Holy Spirit into your way. Stay there. Abide. Find, it, find yourself abiding, sinking, sinking. Fall into, fall into, sink into the eternal abyss of joy. Extend. Offer. Come out of it. Keep offering. Stay in the awareness. Keep offering. Keep extending. You can get busy with activities. Keep the awareness. Offer it. That's the holy instant. And there, let him release you. 
He needs only your willingness to share his understanding, his perspective, to give it to you completely. I've now given it to you. I've experienced it. This is how it works for me. Try it, adapt, play with it, make it your own. Mine is just one of many ways. I'm just sharing with you the way I find. And your willingness need not be complete. You don't have to get it perfectly right, but you play with it. Because his is perfect and his is the essence which you are. And so he'll remind you of what you are. Give your willingness. Go there. But let go of the stories. No, you can't drag the stories in. You can't drag the suffering in. Don't tell the Holy Spirit with stories of suffering. He just laughs and then you're going to be upset because he doesn't know suffering. It It is his task to atone for your willingness, for your unwillingness by his perfect faith. That's why he's been given you because none of us in body mind have perfect faith. That which we call our faith is the infusion of our separate body mind as it starts to dissolve with God's Holy Spirit in us. His perfect memory and the memory of God in us, which we call the joy and love of God in us or the joy and love for truth or the joy and love, the, the, that, that unwillingness to compromise in the search for truth is the energy of the Holy Spirit in us. And that's all you need to do. And it is his faith you share with him there. Out of your recognition for your unwillingness for your release, his perfect willingness is given you by God. Because God knows you better than you think you know yourself. Call upon him. For heaven is at his call. And let him call on heaven for you. And join with the Christ. Merge with the Christ. And once we have all merged with the Christ, we're one, we return to God and we become the ever extending love and joy of God. That was what that which was around long before the universe and long after the universe is gone, it will extend forever. I hope this brings peace to your mind and joy to your mind in the realization that you are exactly where you're meant to be and dot, dot, dot. That part of you that still desires a companion, God knows what's in your heart. Set it aside for now. Companions come. But holy companions come when two of you start, stop looking towards each other for joy and you both direct yourself towards God. Can you imagine a relationship where two come simply to serve the love of God and want for nothing from the other, but to be the love of God? Can you imagine a relationship like that? companionship like that well then surrender let go release your brother release your ideas release your needs be still and know i am and you will be given so much more than you've ever imagined seek you first the kingdom you are the essence of god in you and all else shall be given you because when you know yourself as the extension of God's love, what else will you want? For God is all there is. What else would you want when you know that having and being is the same thing? Stop there and do some questions. And so now we come to the final part of A Course in Miracles, text chapter 16, The Forgiveness of Illusion. And this is it. From here on onwards, your mind will have shifted. You've been diligent. You're becoming vigilant for the voice for God only, meaning you're becoming vigilant for God only. And this is the transition step. This is the tipping point. This is the shift. It starts here now. It's already started the minute you picked up the book, but there will be a major shift in your perception your preception as you go forward now. And remember again, I emphasize that the integration of the non-dual understanding, which can only be truly understood when you go, I move and abide in God as God moves and abide in me. So all of it is happening in my mind as I happen only in God's mind. It is impossible. 
<laughs> to let the past go without relinquishing the special relationship. And the, as I've, you've heard me say this before, the special love relationship is the final obstacle to peace. For the special relationship is an attempt, oh, this is this delicious, to reenact the past and change it. So you fail the relationship, you didn't get the love you wanted, didn't get the recognition, the attention, the whatever, the five love languages or two of the five or whatever it is that you felt you needed. Okay. And so now you hope that in the next relationship, this person who's in a different body mind will give you what you need. And this time you're going to prove to yourself that you're worthy or even worse, you're going to show the past one that you now you deserve to be loved and they lost out. So you use a vengeful idea behind it. And and the pain that is still in there, should that new person act in any way that in any way resembles the past hurt, you'll just project their pain straight back onto them, your pain back onto them, and they you. Imagine slights, remembered pain, past disappointments, perceived injustices, and deprivations all enter into the special relationship, which becomes a way in which you seek to restore your wounded self-esteem and therefore make yourself feel better because you want to lift it. And so when your self-esteem dips, how do you make yourself better when you've got a partner? You try and bring them down and then project your guilt onto them and make them feel guilty and blame them for you not feeling happy. You're the reason I am not happy. You making me, you're making me suffer. You're the reason why I suffer. That special love relationship. Look at what I give you. Look how much I sacrificed for you. And I don't give it back. You know, in the masculine feminine situation, listen to John Gray's teachings. The masculine needs to do things in order to receive gratitude and recognition. And the feminine needs to be held, nurtured, loved, adored, respected in order to feel valued. And what happens to the feminine? She complains. And what happens to the masculine when he gets a complaint? What he needs, the testosterone, which he gains through the gratitude and the recognition, diminishes. So he moves into estrogen. He moves into his feminine. She takes over. She wants to control, dominate, you know, direct. And what happens when she controls, directs, and takes over because he's not acting? She moves into a masculine. What happens when she moves into her masculine? Her testosterone goes up. And what happens when her testosterone goes up? Her estrogen goes down. Now she's unhappy. For the feminine to be happy, their, testosterone, their estrogen needs to be 50 times higher than the masculine. And for the masculine to be happy, his testosterone needs to be 50 times higher, 100 times higher than the feminine estrogen. And what do they do? They're projecting their unpent guilt onto each other. Disappointment, disappointment, unhappiness. And then they're surprised. And then we get into the, the non, we wanted them to project the non-dual understanding that we're all equal, but we're doing it onto our physical unequalness, men and women. And we say, but men and women are equal. This is the whole new woke moment, movement. Men and women are not equal at all. There's a reason why they split and divide in order to seek in each other what they couldn't give to themselves. So you're never going to find happiness in masculine, feminine relationships. And feminine feminine relationships won't work because they both have too much estrogen. And masculine masculine relationships don't work. Why? Because they have too much testosterone. So they both want to direct or they both want to enhance. Relationships are doomed to fail because men are from Mars and women are from Venus, and therefore forget it. This process completely differently. Never the two shall understand each other. They can learn techniques and go into school and learn how to. But there's always a sense of sacrifice when I have to act in a certain way for you to see me and love me as I am and vice versa. And so even though they seem to be loving and the sex is great and, and they're happy and it's romantic and they're able to make their romance last until their 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s, it's still going to fail. Why? Because there's always some form of compromise and compromise is perceived by the body, mind, as sacrifice and sacrifice is perceived as giving up that which you want for the unwanted. <clears throat> and yet, 
if you forget about all of these ideas, and John Gray is most definitely as awake as it gets in terms of a philosophical, psychological teacher in terms of relationship, he's brilliant. But as much as you try and figure it out and work out the patterns, it's going to lead you to disillusionment. Why? Because the body starts to fade. And so you can have happy, 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 romantic, but at one stage you don't want to get out of bed because everything hurts. And now you're going to give each other attention. And eventually one spouse goes before the next, leaving the other one feeling lonely and deprived. And so it continues. What basis would you have for choosing a special partner without the past? Because if you weren't taught it through history and your parents and relationships, and you would just woke up on an island, had no memory of ever having existed, and there were people around you, would you seek out a partner? Would it even be in your makeup? Every such choice is made because of something evil in the past to which, to, which you cling and for which, and for which must someone else atone because everyone else is to blame for your suffering. It started with your parents and it worked its way through school and then all your past relationships that fail. The special relationship takes vengeance on the past. By seeking to remove suffering in the past, it overlooks the present in its preoccupation with the past and its total commitment to it. I'm going to prove myself worthy. And so, you know, once upon a time, this little boy that grew up poor and made himself into something by studying and educating himself and blah, 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 blah. By the time he was 29, he was a millionaire and uh, married to the most perfect goddess you can imagine you know, and drove the perfect low slung Italian little car that blah, 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 fish based and had all the right suits and watches and pens and briefcases and suits and ties and nonsense and wanted to perceive himself in a certain way because he had now achieved worldly success. The fear, pain and hurt was still there. The past wasn't gone. The anger was still there. It didn't go away, but man, everybody thought this was the magical couple. Wow, look at them. They just have everything. And yet the hurt was always there and all it needed is some strange stare or some silly racist comment or some sexist. And that whole thing would just come crumbling down because it was never really built on reality. It was built on desire to be something you wanted to prove to other people that once hurt you that you were something better than. You wanted to be special. And it took a brain tumor and, um, and a serious smack upside the head for this person to realize that all he'd been doing is living an illusion to prove to the past that he was worthy. When deep inside himself, when he was just still, he knew that he didn't belong to any of this. And all of this existed in his awareness. It took a tumor a holy smack across the chops for him to awaken. No special relationship is experienced in the present because it's always based on past or what we're going to do. 50 shades of the past envelop in gray and make it what it is. It has no meaning in the present. And if it means nothing now, it cannot have any real meaning at all. Because the meaning is what we want to give to it and what we expect from it. And it's the very thing that we give to it and expect from it that then leads us to eternal disappointment, hurt, fear, and guilt. And then we take it out on each other. How can you change the past except in fantasy? And who can give you what you think the past deprived you of since it doesn't exist anymore? And so you're now going to shoehorn it and project it onto everything now and blame everything in the here now on what happened to you in the past. We never get angry over the reasons we think we are. We drag the whole past and our history into it and then project it on other people that look anything like or sound anything like or act anything like anyone that reminds us of the hurt in the past. And yet the past is nothing. Try and find the past thought in the now. Try and be here now in the eternal now. And find a thought when there is no thought in the eternal now. The past is nothing. Do not seek to lay the blame 
or deprivation on it or anyone that appeared in your idea for the past is gone in 60 seconds. You cannot really not let go of what is already gone. You can try hang on to it. It's why we invented the photograph as an ego. We can replay our little fantasies of what it should have been like. And of course, we only remember the good stuff, but we remember seconds and we forget all the, the shit in between. It must be, therefore, that you are maintaining the illusion that, is, that it has not gone because you think it serves some purpose that you want to fulfill. You want to replay it. You want to prove that you can transcend where you in the past failed. And it must also be that this purpose could not be fulfilled in the present, but only in the past. And yet, if the past is gone, how could you? Be still and know. Be vigilant for God. Because those attack thoughts come. And do not underestimate the intensity of the ego's drive, attack thoughts, for vengeance on the past and to prove itself worthy. I mean, it's why people go back to their high school reunion every 10 years is to prove look at how oh i was the i was the geek that no one gave attention look i've now got the babe or oh, i was the ugly duckling look at now i've got my enhancement done and i now married a billionaire etc etc it is completely savage and completely insane because we're now projecting the past into the present and expecting the present then not to affect our future. Because if you drag the past into the present now, it becomes the energizing resonance at which you vibrate, therefore projecting it into what appears to be the next moment, the future. And what does the future look like? The past, the very thing you wanted to avoid or disprove or overcome because of your resistance of it here now becomes your future. And so you're stuck in the, in the perpetual suffering of that idea that you experienced back then, now, and in the future. And then you go to some shabby little caravan with some chickabee with a dookie on her head and a big crystal ball and, oh, look into my future and is there someone for me back then? And that's all just going to make everything realistically go away. No, it's not because all you're going to do is take the past and project a moment of the perfect person anyway. For the ego remembers everything that you have done that has offended it. Everything. Sin, fear, guilt and seeks retribution of you because it's you that went through it. You let it down. You went through the suffering and pain. The fantasies it brings to its chosen relationships in which to act out its hate are fantasies of your destruction. Of course, you don't want to look at it because the minute your destruction comes up, look away. No, 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 no. Because if I go into that fire of my past, then I will be destroyed. But you're busy destroying yourself. Go into the fire. Go right through it. For the ego holds the past against you. And in your escape from the past, it sees itself the of the vengeance it believes you so justly merit. It has to. So it wants you to suffer. Yet without your alliance, in your own destruction, the ego could not hold you onto, onto the past. So if you let it go and you simply want the peace of God, then return in vigilance to the here now and it cannot hold you. Best. Until you can look back on your past and realize the gift it's given you so that when you learn to transcend it in understanding, the transcendence that brings you the eternal peace here now, and therefore the gratitude that comes with understanding the lesson that you, you've been through it, you realize it was all me, I created all of this, I fell asleep, I've dreamt up the entire illusion. Every single character in the stream are fragments of me throughout time, every single one, from, from Adam all the way through to Jesus and all the way through to me. All of it, it's me, me, I dreamt them all up. And, and those characters attack me. So each one would suffer and find a way out. And as I finally get to the here and now, in the awareness of my Christ mind, as God's infused Holy Spirit with the essence of what I am, extends and shares it all in gratitude, I move and abide in God. God moves and abides in me. There is no past. There's only here now. The eternal 
the eternal here now. In the special relationship, you are allowing your destruction to be. That is, is that, that this is insane is obvious. But what is less obvious is that the present is useless while you pursue the ego's goal as its ally. Because there's nothing to chase but suffering if you want to chase and you want to acquire. That's why it teaches us, be still and know I am. Let go, let God. The past is gone. Seek not to preserve it in special relationship that binds you to it and would teach you salvation as past. So you must return to the past to find your salvation, to correct it, to make it different, to make it better, to improve it. That's why there's so many, so many self-help things out there and so many gurus and so many life coaches and blah, 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 because we're all going to improve upon the formula. So we're going to take the past and improve upon it. Nothing to improve. Let it all go. There is no fantasy that does not contain the dream of retribution for the past. Would you act out your, the dream? Do you want to act out this? Do you want to continue with it? Is the dream so much fun? Or do you want to let it go and return to the joy that you always have been, that you know you are when you go into the present? In the special love relationship, the special relationship, it does not seem to be acting out of vengeance that you seek. Of course not. It seems like you're acting out of love and, and care and charity and all that wonderful stuff, that spiritual stuff, that fix the world. And even when hatred and the savagery break briefly through, the illusion of love is not profoundly shaken because you can transcend this. You're special. Yet the one thing the ego never allows you to reach, okay, reach or, or never allows to reach awareness, awareness, that is what you are, is the special relationship, is the acting out of vengeance on yourself. And sometimes it does get through, and that's called suicide. Okay. But ultimately, it's always projected onto other people. Yet what else could it be in seeking the special relationship? You look not for glory in yourself. You have denied that it is there. You denied the presence of God and God's Holy Spirit and Christ's mind in the very essence of what you are. And the relationship becomes your substitute for that emptiness of what you've denied and yet desperately crave for and seek. And vengeance becomes your substitute for atonement, which is why we love the vengeance movie. Look how many movies are all about vengeance and we cheer when the hero goes back and murders the person who hurt them when they were young or murdered, whatever. We love the vengeance stuff. We love the and Donner. The escape from vengeance becomes your loss. You know, so vengeance becomes your substitute and it becomes your loss. Against the ego's insane notion of salvation, the Holy Spirit gently lays the holy instant, be still and know. We said before that the Holy Spirit must teach through comparisons, the neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, I'm not that, therefore I must be. And uses opposites to point to truth. Opposites attract. Polarized, masculine, feminine. Polarized in order to point out to each other our wounded sinfia guilt, shadow still inside. So we're, when you come into special love relationships, they are going to be triggers that bring that to awareness. And so in holy companionship, we look forward to it and we ask each other, show me. The holy instant is the opposite of the ego's fixed belief in salvation through vengeance for the past. In the holy instant, it is understood that the past is gone because the holy instant is always here now. And with its passing, the drive for vengeance has been up, uprooted and has disappeared because there is nothing but the stillness of the here now. The stillness and the peace of now enfold you in its perfect gentleness. Everything is gone except the truth. The truth is silent. For a time, you may attempt to bring illusions into the holy instant. Desires, wishes, praying. And all it does is to hinder your full awareness, full awareness of the complete difference in all 
in all respects between your experience of truth and illusion because you want to integrate the two and yet you cannot. And yet you will not attempt this long because you'll realize it very quickly because the light of awareness becomes all pervading and shines through all of it. In the holy instant, the power of the Holy Spirit will prevail because you joined him and therefore are one with them and therefore become God's Holy Spirit. The illusions you bring with you will weaken the experience of him for a while, but only ever so slightly, and will prevent you from keeping the experience in your mind at first. And yet the holy instant is eternal. So it just seems to at first. And your illusions of time and space and matter will not prevent the timeless from being what it is, nor you from experiencing it as it is, the eternal here now. What God has given you is truly given and will be truly received. There is no other option. Delay is only the, an idea in the mind. For God's gift have no reality apart from your receiving them. Your receiving completes his giving because it's oneness. It's one. You will receive because it is his will to give. He gave the holy instant to be given to you. And it is impossible that you receive it not because he gave it. And because he gave it, he gave it to all of his sonship, which exists and abides in him. And when he gave it his sonship, the sonship have it, because the sonship is the extension of God's love. When he willed it, meaning when he extended, he willed his, that his son be free. He extended his son as free. And his son was free. In the holy instant, his reminder that his son will always be exactly as he was created. And everything the Holy Spirit teaches reminds you, is to remind you that you have received what God has given you, and you can never be apart from that which is what you are. There is nothing you can hold against God's reality. All that that must be forgiven are the illusions that you've held against your brothers, your projections, your dreaming projection. And you think you're a localized body mind. It's all you. Their reality has no past and only illusions can be forgiven. So you forgive nothing in truth. God holds nothing against anyone for he is incapable of illusions of any kind and holding something against something that doesn't exist is not possible. Release your brothers from the slavery of their illusion by forgiving them the illusions you perceive in them. For they have no illusions, but that which you projected into them, dreaming son of God. Thus you will learn that you have been forgiven. For it is you who offered them illusions. And it is you that took the illusions you offered yourself. In the holy instant, this is done for you in time, not in eternity to bring you to the true conditions of heaven, which is the eternal now, as you, the essence of God's spirit, forever extending as his kin kingdom, as his sonship, as the love of God you are. You were made to be. God extended love, and you are that which is the extension of love. Remember that you always choose between the truth and illusion, between the real atonement that would heal and the ego's atonement that would destroy. Because the ego's atonement is always some form of physical self and enhancement, self help nonsense. It's to aggrandize, it's to improve the ego formula, not to let it go. Delicious. The power of God and all his love without limit will support you as you seek only your place in the plan of atonement arising from his love, the power of God and all his love. You are his love. The power of God is you. The power of God is his love. You are his love. Without limit, you are limitless, will support you as you remember what you are, as you seek only to remember what you are, which is your place 
in the plan of remembering what you are, arising from that which you are, which is his love. Be an ally of God and not the ego in seeking how atonement can come to you. And how do you become an ally? The seeking how becomes first get your why right. I choose to remember. Why? Because I choose to be the love I choose to be. His help suffices for his messenger, Holy Spirit, the memory of God in you, understands how to restore the kingdom to you and to place all your investment in salvation in your relationship with me, with him. Meaning, give. Whenever anything pops up, all attention goes into the silence. Silent I am. Seek and find his message in the holy instant. Be still and know I am. One of you asked me yesterday, how do I know that it's the ego, that it's not the ego, that it's the Holy Spirit calling? Because it's always with clarity, it's always instinctive, and it always leads you to serving others joyously. And that serving of others joyously serves your joy. Because as you serve joy, you must have it. So as you serve it, it extends from you, increasing the joy in you. If it's fearful, it's of ego. Where all illusions are forgiven. From there, the miracle extends, as I've just said, to bless everyone and to resolve all problems, be they perceived as great or small, possible or impossible. There is nothing that will not give place to him and to his majesty. Why? Because everything happens in him. To join in a close relationship with him is to put all your vigilance there is to accept relationship as real and, though the, and, and through their reality, give over all illusions for the reality of your relationship with God. So converse, have a conversation, wake up in the morning, greet God, be present, acknowledge the Christ mind as you, acknowledge God's Holy Spirit within you, acknowledge yourself as the son and converse with your father, converse, talk, discuss, ask, Build that relationship. And so what if someone watches you walk past and you're mad? Who cares? Because you no longer care what people think. Praise be to your relationship with him and no other. Because that's the only relationship that exists. The truth lies there and nowhere else. Your, you choose this or nothing. When you choose anything in this world or any type of relationship, you choose nothing. And I want you to close your eyes. I'll read this and experience this as a, as a prayer. Experience these words as an offering. So just take a deep breath and just go into silence and invite Holy Spirit into yourself. Do it now. Just close your eyes. Center and just invite Holy Spirit into your awareness and sink into your heart. Sink into God. Abide in God. Be here now. Be as you are. Invite the love and the light of the Christ, the mind of the Son of God, to be your mind as you share these words. Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you in which there are no illusions and where none can ever enter. Our holiness is yours. Where can there be? What can there be in us that needs forgiveness when yours is perfect? The sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. And Father, we choose to no longer forget your forgiveness and your love, for we exist because of your grace your forgiveness, and your love. Let us not wander into temptation by forgetting what we are and thinking that we're something else. For the temptation of the Son is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given. For what you have given is the love and joy of yourself. And accept but this into the minds which you created 
and which you love as your holy son forever in eternity in the presence of the now. Amen. Gratitude be given to the Christ, the mind which is awake and remembers itself as God's eternal love, joy, and peace, as God's kingdom, that which God abides, and that which abides in God. I live and move in God as God lives and moves in me. Yes, it's a gentle concession because it's, the truth is silent, but it's just a little step closer as we release ourselves from the bondage of space-time bodies, the idea of sin, fear, guilt, the thought that we've been abandoned, rejected, are unworthy, have done something wrong, and could possibly be punished by the very essence of that which created us. This is our day of liberation. This is our day of freedom. We, we turn the corner now, and we remember we are the light. And we invite the light in. The light has come. I abide in my Father, and my Father abides in me. Glory be to the Son that came for us and awoken to himself, and thus awoken ourselves. And now that we are one in mind and in Christ and in God's Holy Spirit, let us be the light of the world as we serve the awakening of the rest of our sleeping selves, that we as one, may awaken in the glory of the Father and extend forever as that which is the love of God. Amen. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I'm going to stop now and we will continue next week. Thank you for being courageous to do this. And no matter how intense it gets, do not stop. You're there. The light has come. Blessings, Luke.